Hello and welcome to the third in a series of Thermos training videos. In this video, I'll take you through the interface for editing the key parameters that control Thermos' decisions. Afterwards, you should have learned what you can and can't change about buildings and paths, how to change buildings annual and peak demand estimates, how to change paths cost parameters, and how to use the selection and editing interface efficiently. So first, let's look at the parameters we can change about buildings. For this, I've started a new problem in the map, which we created for exercise one in Bradford on Avon. So zooming in a bit, we can see some buildings in the candidates layer. We've already seen how selecting a building on the map will show you information about it in the selection info pane on the right. For example, this building, you can see the annual demand and peak demand estimates. These are important because they'll determine the heat requirement for that building, as well as the size of pipe needed to connect the building to a network. In turn, these factors will determine the cost and benefit of doing so. So what should we do if these values are incorrect or unrealistic? The answer is that you can change them. To edit this building, press the E key, which displays the building editing window. In the editing window, you can see the parameters you have available to change. To change the demand and peak demand for the building we've selected, we need to tick the box next to each field to unlock them for editing, and then type in the new values we want to use. Let's say 300 megawatt hours a year for the demand, and 150 kilowatt peak for the peak. Now I click OK and this building will be changed and we can see in the selection info panel that the new values have taken effect. Now what if we wanted to mod modify several buildings at once? Perhaps unsurprisingly you can do this by making a selection of buildings and pressing the E key to edit them. Now the editor window is a bit different as it contains more than one row. At the top window, you can see there's another new thing. The menu is allowing you to edit the buildings by category. This menu is what controls the rows that are displayed and you can change it to a few different values. If you set it to name, a row will be shown for each different name. And if you set it to category, it's showing you a different row for each category and if you show nothing it'll get a row for all of the buildings so let's go back to category each row in this view represents a group of buildings from the selection the count column tells you how many buildings belong to that row so for example there's three pubs seven cafes making a change to row and pressing ok will edit all buildings in that row for example, if I wanted to change the settings for the, the bank, there's two banks in this, so I'll tick the box here to say we'll change the demand from 18 to 80 and then press OK. So now in the selection that we've made, if we go and click on bank, then you'll see that it's become 160 megawatt hours a year and that's because both of the banks are set to 80 megawatt hours a year. So this is how you edit the demand figures for individual buildings or groups of buildings in your network design. Note that these changes belong to the network design and not the underlying map. So if you start a new network in the same map, the changes you've made will not apply there. What other parameters can we change? Height and peak demand are considered very variable between buildings and most of the other options are expected to come from a few choices. These are not descriptive of the building so much as of the problem. So let's have a look at the tariffs page. Each tariff is a collection of price parameters which have a name. You can define as many of these as you want and then go back to the map and say which buildings are on which tariffs. So let's define a new tariff called block of flats.
This may be more expensive to connect to the network. So let's increase the standing charge to 75 and say the unit charge could be 7.5 cents per kilowatt hour. And then we could add a capacity charge of 80 pounds. So then if we scroll down, we can also add connection costs. For example, block of flats with a fixed cost of 80 pounds to connect to the network. So now that we've defined this tariff, we can return to the map to put buildings on it. So if I select a few buildings over here and then press the E key, then we need to go to tariff and connection costs. And here we've got the count. So we've got two banks and two residential. So if I change the tariff to block of flats, block of flats, and then the connection costs also, I click OK. You'll be able to see here the tariff says block of flats and then the base cost has gone up to 320, which refers to the connection costs. So this is how you can edit tariff parameters for buildings in Thermos by controlling which can control their revenue and the connection costs. So next, let's have a look at the parameters we can edit for paths. Pipes in Thermos cause two types of cost the direct capital cost of installing a pipe and the ongoing operating costs that the plant has to pay to cover heat losses. Both of these are controlled in a categorical way, like tariffs are for buildings. So to change the relevant parameters, we go to the pipe cost page by clicking on the thermos icon and going to pipe costs. So there are three sets of information on the pipe cost page. The pipe costs here with multiple pipe sizes. So you get information on the capacity, the losses, the pipe costs in currency per meter, which reflects the cost of buying the pipe and the welding of the pipes. You also get the civil engineering cost for a soft or a hard dig. So you can edit any of these details down here or by deleting them. You can add new civil costs if you wanted something in the middle and you can also change the default for the civil costs here. So then you've also got the capacity and loss model. So this offers two options depending on your heat distribution medium. So this is the hot water and this is the saturated steam. So you're able to change any of the um, parameters in these boxes and also you can read the manual on there's fur further information on this and then at the bottom of the page we've got the pumping costs so these boxes can also be filled out to suit any pumping costs as a proportion of the system output and also the resulting emissions from that so let's see how to change the cost parameters for particular paths in the map page. So um, I'm going to select some paths and buildings and then press the E key. So on the edit candidates window, you can click through to paths and this has got a variety of options in here. So we've got whether there is a connector, footway, secondary, pedestrian, etc. And then the length of the pipes that I've selected. Then you can also set the maximum diameter of pipe of all of these different types. And it's the same with the buildings where you can change it, change what you're looking at by category, name or nothing. Um, you've also got this option with the exists, which suggests whether the pipe already exists as part of a network. So this might be useful where you may want to upgrade a current network or extend it. Um, so by ticking exists, it basically brings the capital cost of the pipe to zero because it's already there. And then you can also change the civil cost from whatever the default is to the other option. So the other thing, another thing you're able to change is the heat profile of the buildings. 
these are set to residential as the default. So to look at these, we're going to go to uh, supply problem and then profiles. So here at the top, it shows you the default profile, which you can change. So as I said, it's set to residential, but you can change it to commercial or a flat rate. So then we have the day types. These are normal weekday, normal weekend, winter weekday, winter weekend, and a peak day, which will refer to the highest demand of the year. So the relative frequency here shows how many days a year of this type. So you can see the peak only happens once, normal weekday 197 times, normal weekend 78, etc. So as I click through these, you'll see the different profiles changing. For example, the winter weekend may be higher than a normal weekend with the heat, heat profile. And this is split up into 24 different time types, so 24 hours. You're able to add a heat profile. So by clicking on the plus here, um, for example, if you know a particular building's heat profile, or if you know a particular type of building's heat profile, such as a hospital. So below the heat profiles, we've got fuel prices which could have reflect a dynamic tariff if we wanted to change for peak times, having higher prices and during lower prices overnight. So these prices are currently fixed throughout the day and night. Um, there's also the ability to enter the greenhouse gas emissions and particulate matter, either as a fixed rate or higher at certain times of the day. And then down at the bottom, we've got substation load which can be entered as this needs to be considered where electrically powered technologies are used within the heat supply solution, such as the heat pumps. Um, so if a substation already serves a high local demand, then it needs to have enough spare capacity or headroom to also serve the heat pump. Additionally, if you've got a CHP, a combined heat and power plant, um, as part of the heat supply solution, this could generate additional power and then offset some of the load from the substation. So that's worth considering. Um, so next we're gonna look at the supply problem technologies page. So on this page, you can change the parameters for the plant technology that will be supplying the heat network. For example, changing the capacity, the capital cost, operating cost. Um, you can also add some information about your substation, and then down at the bottom, we've got um, storage technologies. So this is how much heat, the capacity is how much heat the store can take. So you can take, change these parameters or add a new storage technology. So if we go back to the map view and create a network, click save and then optimize the supply. So I've created a random network in here with required buildings and a supply point. And I'm going to click save and then I'm going to click optimize and both the network and the supply. So this can sometimes take a few minutes with the more buildings it will take longer to compute. Perfect. So if we go on the thermos icon and then as you scroll down, now below supply problem, you'll have supply solution as well. So here I'm going to click on solution summary and then we've got some different tabs within this to show our outputs from the supply optimization. So the top part of the page shows the total cost summary of the technologies that we've chosen. So each of the supply technologies that have been chosen by the model for this particular network. The costs shown are the capital expenditure, operating expenditure, fuel cost, export cost, emissions cost, total cost and present cost. And then there's heat production shown here as watt hours per year and watt hours total over the accounting period. 
which in this case I think was set at 50 years. The average unit cost of production is 1 cent and 43 per kilowatt hour. The average unit cost of production and the supply cost, which is entered in the supply parameters window, are the same thing. But the former is calculated by the tool via the supply optimization, and the latter is input by the user, initially as a guess. The two are then matched, i.e. the unit cost of production resulting from the supply optimization should be compared with the user input supply cost used for the network optimization. The supply cost should be no lower than the average unit cost of production, and if it is, then it should be changed and the network re-optimised to see that impact. If you have predefined requirements for the cost of heat production, which may relate to the tariffs you're expecting to use, then you should start tweaking the supply optimization parameters until you get an acceptable result here, and then iterat iteratively apply this to the network optimization to ensure the results are in turn acceptable. The plant and storage tab shows the costs with the peak wattage and output in watt hours per year for the plant. For the storage, the store size and peak flow are shown with the capital cost. You can view these costs as total, lifetime or present cost and the other costs as total, annual or present cost. The heat production tab shows the different profiles of production for different days. So we have the normal weekday and weekend here at the top, with the heat pump shown in orange, which is working at a varying rate throughout the day. During the winter weekday and winter weekend, there are some storage shown in the higher demand and peak times. So that's this purple colour. The heat pump is more consistently working throughout the time as it's charging up the storage with heat during times when the demand is met. On the peak day at the bottom, there's a gas boiler running as well as the heat pump and the storage at the peak times. This suggests that the heat pump isn't able to create enough heat to supply and charge the store. The fuel consumption and grid export tab shows the fuel use during different types of day. Electricity is only needed where there's the heat pump and the storage, and then the natural gas comes in where the gas boiler is added during the peak day. And then we've got emissions shown in the last tab, but we haven't added any, so they're all zero. Hopefully, following this video, you can now change parameters relating to the buildings and paths within Thermos.